Thanks for taking the time to watch FireRock's pre-engineered masonry fireplace installation video. Spending a few minutes to watch this video now will make it easier in the long run and ensure you have a professional finish to your project. Today we will be showing you how to install our indoor-outdoor California conventional fireplace shown here on a covered porch. We'll also be showing you how this installation works when placing the fireplace on a concrete pad over a crawl space or basement. Let's get started. FireRock fireplace kits were designed as an all-masonry alternative to a scratch-built unit. They are strong, easy to transport, and easy to assemble with the right preparation. This assembly works best as a two to three person project. The Fire Rock fireplace must be erected on a non-combustible base with a non-combustible hearth extension of at least 20 inches in front of the firebox opening and at least eight inches on both sides. For this installation, we'll be building the fireplace over a basement and therefore need to construct a masonry tower to support the pad and weight of the fireplace. Consider your finished hearth height when building the tower and pouring your pad, making sure to account for the 3 and 3 quarter inch base plate and fire brick. The non-combustible pad is best made from a 6 inch thick concrete slab with number 4 rebar tied together at a maximum of 12 inch intervals. Center poured on top of corrugated metal suspended over concrete block. Once your pad is poured and level, wait at least 24 hours before building your fire rock fireplace. Now we will work on the assembly of the fire rock fireplace. Fire rock has packed the pallet for safety and efficiency. FireRock also offers installation kits that include the damper, fire brick, and mortar you'll need to construct the fireplace and install fire brick. Before we begin building the firebox, let's talk about the mortar we will use. FireRock adhesive mortar is a specially formulated low sand polymer modified with heat resistant additives and is designed to work as a glue rather than a typical joint provider. It is appropriate to use a trowel or grout bag to apply the mortar to the firebox and smoke chamber components. This material is to be mixed to a toothpaste consistency, according to the instructions on the bag, and trowel directly from the mixing pail. This mortar must be used to construct the firebox for your fire rock warranty to be valid. Start with the placement of the firebox base plate on top of our level, non-combustible surface. We can't stress enough how important it is that your base plate be square to the room, properly centered and level. In the event you decide not to use the base plate, carefully chalk lines where the plate would be to ensure the proper placement of your firebox. Next, place a back block on the base plate. Then place a side block on either side of the back block. Components should be covered by approximately one half to one inch of mortar, so as to result in a 1 16th to 1 8th inch joint when stacked. It's normal for mortar to ooze from all sides when applied correctly. Use a trowel to smooth this excess mortar across the joints to create an airtight seal. We call this buttering the joints. Keep building in this order to completion. At every level, check to make sure all surfaces are plumb and level and continue to butter all joints. Place the square throat back at the back of the firebox. Next, place the radius throat front and insert the angle iron in the desired position. Angle it up for maximum firebox opening or downward for additional smoke lip. Note the curvature of the radius intel. This helps to improve smoke draw. Upon setting the four throat components, 
a recess is formed for the purpose of locating the damper. Place the damper in the recess and mortar at the corners if needed to secure in place, but do not create an airtight seal. Next, we move to the smoke chamber. Identify the correct order before you mortar with the larger components on the bottom. The front and back pieces are identical and can be positioned either way. Align the smoke chamber flush with the back wall of the fireplace, leaving an approximate three inch ledge on top of the radius throat. This ledge allows space for a framing header while maintaining the one inch clearance to combustibles. Continue to check for and maintain plumb and level installation of these components. The final component of the firebox is the part that transitions from smoke chamber to chimney base. Slather mortar at least one inch thick on the tops of all four smoke chamber components before placing this final component and be sure it is level front to back and side to side. One advantage of Fire Rock is our solid masonry chimney block, which has a 15 inch flue. This larger flue provides improved smoke draw and is easy to assemble with one piece construction. Continue to butter all joints inside and out to ensure a smooth pathway for smoke to escape. A one and a quarter inch minimum fire brick lining compliant with ASTM 1261 is required. Thicker fire brick may be used as an option and is recommended for a sturdier wall. Fire Rock recommends using a full two and a half inch brick for the floor and back wall. The same Fire Rock high temp refractory mortar used for the firebox and chimney may be used to affix the fire brick to the inner wall of the firebox. Mix mortar according to package instructions and apply a skim coat of mortar to the back wall at approximately 1 16th inch thickness. Using a trowel, apply mortar to the face of the fire brick at a thickness to result in a minimum 1 16th inch joint. We recommend that you start at the front edge of the floor and work your way back, leaving approximately a 1 half inch gap off the back and side walls. This space allows for heat expansion and is to be left empty of mortar. Failure to leave an expansion gap can result in fire brick cracking. Use half-inch guides to help space the expansion gap. Remember to remove the guides before starting the side wall. Apply fire brick to the back wall, covering the expansion gap with the overlap of brick, but leaving it free of mortar. Apply fire brick to the side wall starting at the front of the box and moving back, covering the expansion gap with the overlap of brick, but again leaving it free of mortar. While you finish up by cleaning the worksite, take a damp sponge and wipe away any excess mortar from the brick and smooth the joints. Every new fireplace needs time to cure before use. We recommend a minimum of 28 days in a dry setting. Fire Rock recommends outside air kits be installed for all indoor applications. These can be purchased from your Fire Rock dealer. Make cuts in the side block walls prior to installing fire brick, following manufacturer instructions. A licensed HVAC installer should run the pipe. Log lighters are another popular accessory that can be purchased from your Fire Rock dealer. They are available as flush mount, installed before fire brick, and top mount, installed after fire brick. Follow manufacturer's instructions for assembly and consult a licensed plumber to run the gas line. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to call us or visit us online at firerock.us.